So after you finished with all the Alaskan milling, after it dried a little bit, you brought all the wood over here? I brought it all over here. So this is a little better drying area because it gets better sun exposure. Uh -huh. So it, it's dried enough I can pick up these two bys without too much problem now. It's probably half dry, I guess. But right now I need to replace the deck that's on the uh, front part of my piece of property. Mm. And so what I need to do is I need to take the uh, four by slabs and the two by slabs and, and get the width dimensions so that I can use them to build a deck. So on the left we have the four by slabs, four right. inches by 20 inches, 18 inches like that. Mm -hmm. And I've already cut most of those up for the uh, four by sixes that I need on the deck. Uh -huh. Because I had a whole stack here that was as tall as that. Right. And I've cut up a lot of the uh, two by material that'll go for the deck. But I will need a little bit more. Not quite enough yet. I'm guessing it's all a little lighter than three months ago? Four months ago? Yeah. It weighs about half as much. Now. Half as much. <laughs> That's great. Wow. It was really heavy before. Yeah. So what I need to do now is cut a dimension on it, a straight line rip, so that I can get, get it onto the table saw. And this is a only about a 14 inch slab. So I'll probably just try to get uh, I might get two, two pieces that are six and a half inches wide. They don't have to be something like you get at a mill yard. Ah. It can be any dimension I can get out of it. Yeah, and it might be approximate. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is this, this board is very straight, and so I'm just going to get a straight line rip going on it with my skill saw. So what I have right now, I've screwed down this uh, board that has uh, is very straight, and I use it as a guide for my skill saw. So I get a straight line rip through the board, and then I can produce two two pieces of uh, lumber that are straight, and they have uh, probably be about I'm going to guess six and a half inches wide. Okay. I don't use the whole piece for a deck that would be say 12 and a half, maybe 13 inches wide because it would cup too badly. So using the whole width of the plank would just be too It'd wide. It'd just cup, mm. yeah. So since this board, after I cut the uh, slab in half, it, it did uh, warp. It, it had warped in the drying process? or No, there's tension in the slab. So uh. when you cut a straight line, sometimes it doesn't stay straight, it warps. So after you cut it, that's when you're seeing your, your warp? Yeah, I'm looking at it and it warped about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Mm. But because of this long straight piece I have on here, I can straighten it out. Okay. So I'll, I'll rip twice to get it. Yeah, so now I can see, yeah, it wasn't quite straight before. Okay, so you'll straighten So I'll straighten it out. On the other too. side. Yeah, on the other side. Mm -hmm. When I have to bend the board when I nail it down on the deck, it's always resisting that. Mm. And so eventually it pulls itself back to where it wants to be. Especially so, a pretty big board like this. So you're going to straighten it as much as you can yeah. so that it doesn't pull so, the nails out of the deck, in other words. Well, so it doesn't, yeah, it pulls the nails. Mm -hmm. yeah.
So now you have dimensional lumber. Is that yeah. what you call it? Yeah, so now it's six inches everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty straight. Relatively so, simple. Pretty pretty simple. I mean as long as you've got yeah. these this equipment. It's labor intensive. Yeah. The way that I do it. Yeah. Uh, and so at some point it'll make more sense to have a like a swing blade mill mm. to mill the lumber up with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm seeing that maintaining six buildings is going to be a good idea to have have that. So probably this next year I'll build one. Yeah. Um, but for someone who's just going to mill up a few logs, this is a great technique, and it doesn't cost you very much. Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying over the, you know, compared to when you did your last deck, you actually have changed your approach slightly this time in milling two buys, and whereas last time you milled six buys. Right, the six bys took longer to dry, so I was always having to lift a lot more weight mm -hmm. in order to break it down on the table saw. And this way, I'm really not having to lift very much weight, and this dries so much quicker because it's just two by. Yes, yes, yes. So when it was six by, you had to cut two inch slabs out of it. Yeah, two inch yeah or, or split it mm -hmm. for some girder material. Mm -hmm. Ah, so these are the this is the these are the planks you've already processed, ready for using in your deck. Right. What I do is uh, I put this wood preservative on where the wood comes in contact with the wood. Mm -hmm. And what is that black stuff? Uh, it's a wood preservative. It's a uh, copper coat. Mm. Uh, that's where, you, where the wood rots. Actually in between where I actually take the deck, last deck apart and that deck when I took it apart. Uh, no rot. Where There's no... Uh, wood touching wood, but where the ah. wood touches wood is where it rots out. So hopefully this will keep, make it last a couple more years. We'll see. I'll, I'll, you can check back with me in 20 or 25 years. <laughs> and see, we'll see how it's doing. So that works as a good spacer? Yeah, this is the amount I like to space. basic uh, girder structure framed up to support the deck and there'll be a second level here that comes in and supports off of this it'll can cantile cantilever over onto this mm. and uh, I'm I ripped out the previous deck that was uh, Cypress and same as this building actually uh, Monty Proval milled up the material for this mil building the whole whole building is Cypress and Sweet it, little place. Yeah, it's and it's Cypress is pretty uh, rot resistant. This deck lasted 21 years, mm. and it wasn't rotten yet, but it probably only would have lasted a year or two more. I could tell it was getting pretty springy. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what I did this time, which I didn't do last time, was I'm putting stringers in. Uh, this span between the girders with the concrete posts is adequate. There's no problem with that. But with the stringer, which is non-structural, there's no concrete uh, pier or post under it, uh, but all it does is tie everything together. So it really makes it so it uh, takes a spring out of it. It really makes it, uh, you know, it really it makes it firm. spring around yeah. because it ties everything together into one, one unit. Yeah. And it looks like you're going to build a back wall to your deck. Right, it'll be a privacy fence, mm -hmm. so it'll be solid. You won't be able to see through, and uh, actually, it will have a return. It'll go all the way across, and it'll have a return wall coming this way. Oh, neat! Well, it'll be nice to see in a few days or a few weeks when it's finished. We'll update. Yeah, great.
Looking nice. Hey, it's coming along. I've got the second part framed up, ready to put the decking down. One thing is the two buildings weren't quite parallel with each other. Ah. And so I was able to absorb the difference in this board here, so this will be equal. Ah. And it doesn't really show. I think they were maybe an inch out of parallel. Uh, so the bench, I'm holding it on with these, these brackets here that are attached to the post. And Probably pretty heavy still, this piece oh, of Oh yeah, it's really heavy. The two inch dries really well, but four inch, <laughs> it wouldn't be dry for another year and a half at least. Oh my goodness. So it's still pretty heavy. Wow, wow. Uh, lovely. Well, it's lovely seeing how you're using the wood, right, transforming the tree. It's great that the material came from the property. Yeah. Uh, there were trees that needed to be taken down. Yeah. And because uh, of the, where they were growing yeah. and relationship to the buildings. Yeah. And uh, light. Yeah. And so I get to utilize it to replace the deck that had to be replaced. So yeah. everything came from the property. Yeah. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Starting to look very nice here. Yeah, I'm in an intermediary uh, stage of the project now. Uh, I framed it up so that I can uh, put the uh, fencing in and it'll be solid. Uh, I needed to install this top uh, double plate and I double plated it this time. It's a little different than last time, so it has a nice design, the relief, mm. but also what it does is it's like double. Uh, plating when you're framing a house so that you can uh, overlap so that that way so this bottom one runs short because this one runs through but the top one the top ones run short ah. and the top one on this one runs through that way I'm able to really strengthen it and tie everything structurally yeah, together. Yeah, I get it. Right and so now at least as far as that part goes, I'm, I'm ready to do the fill of the fence in. Well, this was just to determine that I, I like the way the, the look is, yes. the size of the members. So I'll, there'll be a three-quarter by three-quarter wrapping around yes. each, each panel. So it's sort of like it's framed like a painting is framed. Yes. And you really get to see how you use, like with this technique of the rough Alaskan mm -hmm. mill sewing, you have a mixture of Show the, the surfaces there of the wood. Right. Yeah, it adds a nice a nice element that you have the uh, the rough and the and the sawn, yeah. the smoother. It, it's a nice contrast. Adds a nice element to the design. It makes it more interesting. The bench is looking beautiful too. Yeah, that came out. That's a nice addition. I didn't have that last time here and the width is wide enough a 14 inch bench you can you can actually lay down on it oh, good. Have a spot here oh, good. And not roll off yeah <laughs> and it's a good safety feature for the edge of a deck as well it is a nice yeah. visual and a nice safety feature yeah. so now all well, i have to do is fill in the fence and then build the uh, stairway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then a step where you where you're standing right there and then it'll be finished and the deck part will be finished and then i can go to the interior and start working it's really looking nice here. And so I'm just about done with this project. I have to fill in that area and then finish filling in this area and then I'll be finished. I just have the stairway to put in. So you're, is this tongue and groove? No, it's not tongue and groove. I spline them. Tongue and groove works. That's good. Usually tongue and groove is a, a lot looser than splining. And so it's similar. It's just it has a tongue, a tongue for both sides that I uh, cut a slot in the board and make a spline and then this fits together like this so everything is like that and the perp the reason I do that is uh, because right now if it was not uh, splined it'd look exactly the same as it does mm -hmm. but over the years the boards would start tweaking and warping uh. and so one might buckle out and one buckle in that way and it, it just wouldn't hold up as well it just simply makes it look better over over a 20 year period what i had in here before these were uh, short lengths and it held up really well and these had been long lengths so a little over six feet and uh, it still looked good but in a six foot length it has more opportunity to warp uh -huh. and so it didn't look quite as good as this yeah and so this time i'm making them all to uh, approximately three foot lengths 
And then it adds a little bit of structure in the center too. Right. Because it's kind of like giving it a sheer wall, like creating more of a sheer wall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it creates sheer. Yeah. It helps create sheer having the spline in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it'll just hold up better as far as uh, how it looks in 20 years from now. In this light, you can really see the texture of the, the what we're seeing here, this ripple. That's the texture of how, when you originally cut the wood. Yeah, with Alaskan Mill, yeah. which is, uh, yeah, it's a very nice texture. It really adds interest to the surface. But it's almost like, how could you do that on purpose? Yeah, it, yeah. well, it's much more interesting than uh, being smoother, just a saw curve. Does the, um, the, the return there that you have, mm -hmm. that short return, I imagine that adds a lot of structure. It, yeah, it, it created, uh, created shear going this way, so it oh, doesn't fall over. Before, when I didn't have it last time, I had to put in a, a copper pipe between the two buildings because when you have one wall coming out by itself, these posts, they don't go through, they're just simply attached to the top of the deck right here. The oh, only ones yeah. that go through are the ones that go along there uh -huh. and attach to piers. Yes. And so it, it would be floppy. And so this little return wall really makes makes it oh, yeah, uh, it's structurally that way. I won't have to put in the pipe next time that attaches between this and the building. Yes. So you, it's like it's as well as it being strong in a gale or a wind or a bear coming and leaning against it or... Let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> wow, wow. That was great to finish this deck before the heavy rain hit this weekend. Uh, it uh, really poured and I had just just finished actually wow. the stairway and uh, the thing I've noticed we talked about this earlier was uh, whether this would be more non-skid or not and it does seem to improve the uh, yes improve that you don't slip so much on the deck yes well that's all the um, the texture from the soil because of the technique of using the Alaskan yes uh, this is the wood from the video that we made uh, on showing how to use uh, an Alaskan mill if you want to build one for free. Yeah. You, all you have to have is the chainsaw. So I thought it would be a good follow-up to show what you can do with that wood. Yes. Uh, when milling that uh, with that way, it's not absolutely perfect. Some of the boards do come out a little bit thicker because when you're milling with the mill and you hit a knot, it tends to ride up uh -huh. the, the mill. But it comes out plenty good for doing this kind of a, a project. Well, it's a beautiful deck. I love how simple it is, and yet um, it adds so much to the, the space here. My objective is to add a, a, a good visual line to the buildings. Well, it's really beautiful. Thanks. You bet. And uh, it's an interesting project to convert those raw logs into a, a product like this when they really have to be cut yes. anyway.